Excellent. I'm just finishing putting us on Instagram. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? Um, good morning, everyone. Can, yep, everyone can hear me. Okay, excellent. It is wonderful to see you all here. Uh, please bear with me as I give this presentation. I'm going to be clicking and tapping and all sorts of fun stuff. So, my name is Catherine Marr, and I'm the executive director of the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the nonprofit that operates Wikipedia and its other sister free knowledge sites, as well as supports an amazing global community, which would be yourselves, in the pursuit of sharing free knowledge with everyone in the world. Um, I am very happy to be here today in order to celebrate your work in the education space and talk about some of the opportunities for Wikimedia in education and some of the thinking about the future of what this collaboration could be. Oh. It's all right. For those who need that translation, there is their uh, headphones, and tell them why we leave fast, okay? Okay. While we're, I, I guess I can just keep going while they're getting the slides back up. Okay. So last week in Berlin, um, the Wikimedia community came together for our annual Wikimedia Summit, or some members of the Wikimedia community. And we had the chance to listen to a presentation by Michelle Munterfering, who is the German Minister of State. She spoke to the gathered community about the importance of education and information in open societies. And she told us a story about her husband, who was a young German student at the end of World War II. When he went to school, entire sections of his textbooks uh, about the history had ger of Germany had actually been ripped out. The pages had been removed prior to giving them to the students. And she observed that education is a powerful tool of both to empower but also to control. And today, I think you'd be very unlikely to see that sort of obvious interference in a classroom, at least in Europe. But a classroom is still a place of tremendous power, and how we educate students and what we educate them about is as important as what we choose to leave out. And so I'd ask as this group, how were you taught in school? Were you allowed to question your teacher? What resources were available to you in your education? Did you have textbooks or computers? If you speak with a person sitting next to you, do you think that they had the same opportunities to learn as you might have? Maybe take a look around and ask yourself the question. And if you did have computers, you're younger than I am. <laughs> the value a society places on education is among its most powerful indicators of its stability, prosperity, openness, and flourishing. And the way that we educate and on the topics on which we educate and the people who we educate, these are all choices that we make about who we value and what we value in our societies and citizens. Education can be a liberator or an oppressor. It can reduce disparity or it can reinforce and replicate it. It can give future generations the tools for success or it can irrevocably stunt their potential. We're here today because we all recognize the critical role that education plays. The Wikimedia movement vision, a world in which every single human can freely share in the sum of all knowledge, aspires to be a world in which all people everywhere are able to take part in learning through creating and curating, through sharing and collaborating on whatever topic they choose without limitation. And this vision has in it a silent aspiration, a belief that knowledge and by implication, education and learning is what makes the world a better place. Otherwise, what are we aspiring to? Oh, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> and in this belief, we are not alone. In 2015, the world came together to map a path forward for a sustainable future for our planet and shared humanity, one characterized by peace, equity, and justice. They mapped out the 17 sustainable development goals. Education was the fourth, following only the reduction of poverty and hunger and the advancement of global health. SDG 4, SDG 4, as it is known, speaks to the need to ensure inclusive and equitable opportunities for all, uh, promote quality education and lifelong learning. It was written to ensure that student, children not only have access to education, but that they have access to high quality education. 
This means that students not only get into a classroom, but that they leave the classroom with the knowledge and skills they need to succeed as citizens. In 2017, the Wikimedia movement also came together to ask ourselves what we want to achieve in the next 15 years. The Wikimedia strategic direction for 2030 states, by 2030, we, the Wikime Wikimedia will become the essential infrastructure of free knowledge and anyone who shares our vision will be able to join us. And we identified two key pillars of this effort. One, one is known as knowledge as a service, but the one that is most relevant here is the concept of knowledge equity. For us, the concept of knowledge equity means being intentional about what knowledge and whose knowledge. We declare that as a social movement, we will focus our efforts on, on the knowledge and communities that have been left out by structures of power and privilege. We will welcome people from every background to build strong and diverse communities. And we will break down the social, political, and technical barriers barriers that are preventing people from accessing and contributing to free knowledge. I think a really critical part about this that we believe is that we can't reach this goal alone. This must be reached in collaboration and partnership, and that is an opportunity for us to work with educators around the globe. From the earliest days of Wikipedia and Wikimedia, there's been a connection between our work and that of the formal education sector. If initially teachers were skeptical of the encyclopedia that anyone can edit, that relationship has certainly evolved over time. Over the past decade, we've begun to see how Wikimedia can have a symbiotic relationship with education, one that supports a world in which students gain the skills and information that they need for the 21st century, and where free knowledge gets better through their participation. Wikipedia has proven to be a powerful pedagogical tool in classrooms, and in turn, students and educators around the world have made tremendous contributions to Wikimedia. But today, I think we see the space for an even more audacious collaboration, one that grounds the Wikimedia movement's educational goals in that of SDG 4, one which closes linguistic and knowledge gaps for better education outcomes, one that marries quality education with access to education, one which empowers people around the world to learn in the ways that matter to them, and one which equips learners with critical skills for the future. So I want to talk today about where I see the greatest opportunities for Wikimedia movement and educators to collaborate for an educational future that meets the need of every society. How we can make high quality knowledge available in more languages, particularly indigenous, native, and non-colonial languages. How we can elevate Wikimedia projects as critical learning tools in every classroom. How we can empower young people with the essential life skills such as critical thinking and digital literacy how we can nurture a culture of inquiry and agency in lifelong learning for every person, and how we can establish open learning as the foundation of educational equity for all. We already see the linkages between Wikimedia 2030 and the SDG 4, and it's clear that education is, a, is critical to, no, to social and knowledge equity, but how does this play out in practice? We know that there are significant gaps in opportunity. Every day as a child, I went to a well-resourced school. I boarded a public school bus and went to a school with good infrastructure, attended classes with trained educators that were relatively small in student numbers, uh, studied from subsidized textbooks, and listened to lessons in my native language. I was a deeply fortunate child, although I look very nervous in this photograph. Um, the majority of people do not have this experience. When advancing universal education, we find ourselves against the weight of history. Education has in fact never been universal, not as a goal, not as a system, not as a curriculum, and not even as a civic priority. Our systems have been built haphazardly, locally, and often through systems of patronage, privilege, elitism, occupation, colonialism, and even violence. We have seen an incredible global effort to expand education to everyone, efforts to bring schools and instructors to places that have never previously had formal education. This is wonderful. However, we're still falling short of making education meaningful for most people. Today, 40% of students attend schools in which they may not understand or speak the primary language of instruction. And that is only one of the barriers between students and the education that will shape their lives. What happens when you can't learn in your mother tongue? You face almost insurmountable barriers to learning. In 2008, the World Inequality Database on Education found that only 25% of students in Cote d'Ivoire who were educated in a language that they did not speak at home were able to master basic reading skills. That means 75% of students 
three quarters of every classroom were not achieving basic comprehension in reading due to the fact they were being educated in a language other than their mother tongue. You may lose your own connection with your community. There was a period in the United States and, and actually many colonial countries in which indigenous people were taken from their families and educated at boarding schools. There was a gentleman and there's a gentleman named Bill Wright who spoke about this at length in the United States, talking about how when he went to one of these boarding schools, he not only lost his language, but his Native American Indian name. And he said, I remember coming home and my grandmother asked me to talk Indian to her. And I said, Grandma, I don't understand you. And she responded, then who are you? There are foundational aspects about our ability to learn in our mother tongue that are core to who we are and our ability to connect with our communities and opportunities. So while many cultures have rich histories of learning, uh, much of the world's knowledge is also not currently available. Arabic, which is the world's sixth most popularly spoken language with more than 300 million native speakers, has a rich history of inquiry and learning. And yet, less than 1% of the internet is in Arabic. Only 20% of those 300 million Arabic speakers speak a second language. That means 80% do not. That is 240 million people in the world who have access to less than 1% of all that is known and shared online. The Wikimedia movement sees the opportunity to make high quality knowledge available in every single language. Today, as you, many of you know, we're available in 300 languages in more than 50 million articles, but there are significant gaps in the size of those Wikipedias and the quality of those Wikipedias. This is an opportunity for our work. And our community has been working to close knowledge gaps and linguistic gaps. And some of the most successful op places, the places where we've succeeded the most have been in the classroom. From the beginning, we know that young people have played a critical role in our movement, often as individual contributors. Some of the people who are most established today started when they were 13 years old editing Wikipedia. Um, we've recognized and celebrated the contributions that youth could make from the very beginning. And through formal projects, through classroom work, we've seen that students add tremendously value to the Wikimedia projects across the world. As I said, growing content in underrepresented languages. As you can see, tremendous contributions in terms of nearly two million articles edited as a whole. And I want to use a very specific example of the Hashemite University in Jordan, which has been supporting Wikimedia in education since 2015 in collaboration with local volunteers and the Wikimedians of the Levant user group. More than 500 students have participated in 12 courses in 2017, and by 2018, 54 students formalized a university hub, club, excuse me, to focus on improving content in Arabic Wikipedia. To date, they've edited more than 1,300 articles, 1,300, and added nearly 2 million words to Wikipedia. Much of the content that they've created, too, has been focused on medical content in Arabic, making an essential contribution to a major critical area of knowledge. <coughs> The movement to increase access to education has been powerful and made significant advances. But we also know that access to education is not the same as quality education. In the majority of the world, students may lack internet access or sometimes electricity. So we ask ourselves, how can our movement participate and contribute to adding to the qual goal of quality education for all? Well, Wikimedians have always placed a value on high quality information. For us, it isn't enough simply to have content in a language. It has to be accurate and neutral and verifiable. In Wikipedia, there's a rich tradition and repository of quality knowledge available as a baseline for education. And in fact, the experience of developing or in participating in Wikipedia can itself be a tool for developing skills to assess and produce quality information. And as part of that, Wikipedia is part of a broader movement for high quality open access learning materials, such as OERs. OERs are open educational resources, which are freely accessible, open licensed text, media, and other digital assets that are useful for teaching and learning, as well as for research purposes. Like the Wikimedia projects, OERs offer an alternative model for how educators can access and engage with resources for the classroom. This is a model in which multilingualism and knowledge equity are paramount, where educators and students are encouraged to be contributors as much as consumers, and where resources can be updated almost instantly. It costs less than traditional textbook publishing, further reducing access barriers. OERs are in fact so important that UNESCO is putting forth a recommendation for the adoption of OERs in education. This is a recommendation is an, excuse me, an official UNESCO policy instrument that will both advise national governments on how to support open education in their countries and report on the success of those efforts. 
In our movement, the Wikimedia Foundation, affiliates, and volunteers all contributed to that recommendation through an online consultation process last year. And we believe that this will help influence the adoption of OERs at the national level and make it easier to advocate for the use of Wikimedia in education as a contribution to SDG 4. Of course, it's not just about increasing quality of access. A core principle of Wikipedia is its adaptability to changing information, to local context, to the world around us. Similarly, we believe that there is no one-size-all approach to education. Everyone should be able to learn in their preferred language and in ways that matter to them. This means deeply understanding what matters in different communities and partnering locally at the community level to make sure that students have the resources that they need. For example, Wiki Challenge African Schools was a multinational contest run by Wiki Africa in partnership with the Orange Foundation. It uses Wikifundi, which is an offline Wikipedia editing tool, to help primary students in schools with low or no internet connectivity contribute to Wiki Wikidia, a French language Wikipedia-like project for children aged 8 to 15 years old. The contest challenges to schools to compete by writing Wikipedia articles about something of importance in their area. This is just one example about how offline tools can support access to education, but also local learners. And Wiki Clubs and Camp are another example of, a, of Wikimedia or open learning adapted to a local context. Wikimedia Armenia has a long history of conducting su successful Wiki Clubs and Camps that have a significant impact on their students. In their own world, words, here the school children meet their peers from different countries, communicate with them, share their experience and knowledge, and they do not feel isolated. As Wikimedia is famous all over the world, it has editors from different corners of the world. When our club members meet editors from other countries, they will have something in common. It may be difficult to understand where Karvachar is, but they can proudly say that they are part of a global movement. Through programs like these, students aren't just gaining access to knowledge. They're building critical skills along the way, skills such as critical thinking, collaboration, and communication. Let me provide just a few examples of how this can happen on Wikimedia. Through, through students have been able to tackle challenges such as how do we get more women scientists represented on Wikipedia, or how can I convince the community that this subject is notable. This draws not just on rote recitation or production or learning, this, this involves deep critical thinking and problem solving. Through collaboration on talk pages and production of high quality content, students are introduced to the idea that often the end product is stronger through sharing information and working with others, as well as the, in, um, the process of involving in movement organizing to push forward local and global goals for Wikimedia. And communication. Through Wikimedia and education, students learn how to ed engage with people of different points of view, often from different cultures and in different pathways, um, enabling them to develop skills that allow them to have conversations about how to resolve differences, articulate their ideas better, much like the exercise we engaged in last night, trying to figure out what a tri quad was, right? That was, a, that was a communication exercise for me. And as young people continue to become contributors and editors in our movement, they gain key skills that they can use to find jobs and, and, and as they grow, we actually even work with some of them and hire them. Um, they, uh, while we've talked about formal education, it's just important to think of informal education and learning opportunities. In Norway, the Oslo Metropolitan University has hired students as Wikipedia assistants, where they help the institution share knowledge from its fields of expertise on Wikipedia through updating sources, article writing, and aiding academics who wish to be more active. And in Israel, in Arabic-speaking schools, a new ambassador program is preparing students to become leaders in their own schools. The program aims to provide students with advanced tools and resources, allowing them to become Wikipedia leaders. As ambassadors in their schools, they're there to assist school staff and students in Wikipedia-related activities. Make no mistake about it, these are leadership opportunities. These are giving students the opportunity to take on additional leadership uh, ascend to places of prominence in their communities, learn skills for advocacy and communication. And these can help students not just in the context of Wikimedia, but help prepare them to transition from school into the world after school in whatever form of career or work opportunities that they choose, and however they choose to participate as citizens in their societies. It can help them 
enter the job market with skills that employers are looking for, such as digital literacy, make a difference in the Wikimedia projects, but foundationally and fundamentally to become, to participate as citizens with critical thinking and communication <coughs> skills that help enrich all of our societies. And of course, it's not just youth. Engaging with the Wikimedia projects can build information literacy and digital literacy, important life skills no matter what age you are. Programs that target senior citizens and teachers have been incredibly successful. Drawing on the fact that Argentina has a policy that mandates the inclusion of technology in the classroom, our colleagues at Wikimedia Argentina have built a strategy to articulate skills and values related to collaborative production and open licenses through teacher training workshops online and in person. In Serbia, the teacher education course that is accredited by the Ministry of Education as part of a selection of modules offered for continuous educational professional development. Wikimedia Serbia has been offering these programs twice a year since 2013. And in the Czech Republic, the Seniors Write Wikipedia program believes that Wikipedia can be a new platform where older generations pass their knowledge on to younger generations. So far, 450 seniors, well actually 449, but 450 seniors have participated in their courses, creating or improving nearly 4,000 articles on Czech Wikipedia. We think this is important because we know that our educations were not set up for the 21st century. As I've said at the beginning, very often they were set up to tell students what to think, often sometimes to erase local traditions and cultures, to mold obedient citizens, or to simply produce good workers. And as we learned yesterday, they were also based on forms of, edu of learning that were focused on the needs of the system rather than the needs of the learner. Memorization, lectures, or other forms of passive learning that didn't fully engage one's brain and give them the skills in order to really enjoy a life of the mind. We believe what we're doing is actually flipping that model, giving students agency over knowledge, the agency to evaluate it, critique it, and ultimately to contribute to it. We're providing students with a belief, or not providing, we're encouraging students to believe that their languages, ideas, and perspectives are valuable, that others should be able to read about the knowledge that they have. Last year, I was in Ramallah, um, and in Ramallah, which is in the Palestinian territories, I had the opportunity to sit down with a professor from Berze University, who said to me that the reason that he teaches Wikipedia in the classroom is because it's the first time his students have ever had the opportunity to have a voice in their own history. They go to schools that are passive consumption where they're taught by teachers, they're in large classrooms and they receive information. And the first time a student clicks that edit tab, the first time they're empowered to change knowledge in front of them is a transformational moment for that student because it gives them an opportunity to own what it is that they're learning and to more deeply integrate it into the, not just into their learning itself, but also creates a paradigm in which their knowledge matters in the world. That is what we aspire to. That is transformational. So as I said at the beginning, what we want to do is make high quality knowledge available in more languages, particularly indigenous and non-colonial languages. We want to elevate Wikimedia projects as tools for learning, just like the students for Berzeit. We want to empower people with essential life skills, the ones that they take out of the classroom into the world around them. We want to nurture a culture of inquiry in every person around the globe. No one should read uncritically, whether it's on Wikipedia or whether it's in the news. We want to establish open learning as a foundation of cultural and educational equity. We feel this is foundational to the world that we aspire to. I'd like to end this on an example of our host today. Our Basque education program, the Basque education program, is an incredibly innovative model that subverts the traditional education paradigm. The education program began in 2017 with the purpose to improve content related to educational curriculum available in the Basque language by training university students on how to edit. And in 2018, 1,500, 1,500 students participated in more than 80 courses, adding one and a half million words to Basque Wikipedia. In this model, students are writing information themselves that other students will read. They're writing it in a language that at one time was banned from use in schools. 
They are living examples of the importance of involving students in the knowledge creation process, learning while contrib contributing and closing knowledge gaps. So the beginning of our vision statement starts with imagine. Imagine a world in which every single human can freely share in the sum of all knowledge. I want you to imagine a world in which Wikimedia and education are completely interwoven and where Wikimedia has become an integral part of how the world learns. Imagine primary students using projects to find information and check its accuracy. Imagine making their first edit and growing up with the knowledge of how they can contribute their perspective, their history, their culture to a global knowledge commons. Imagine secondary students questioning biases and working together to make sure that knowledge reflects the world's diversity. Imagine teachers having access to open educational resources that enable them to teach students in their mother language and histories of different perspectives. Imagine, leading that, imagine that leading to a flourishing of knowledge, underrepresented languages, and more on Wikimedia projects, but in the open knowledge ecosystem as a whole. I believe that's what Wikimedia can do in education. I believe we can help advance the sustainable development goals, number four, so we can get to a world that we want to be in by 2030, which coincidentally is the year in which the sustainable development goals are meant to mature and is also our strategic directions horizon. Imagine creating and closing linguistic and knowledge gaps for the world and marrying quality education with access, empowering people and equipping people with the skills for the future. I think that we can come together over the following days to think bigger than we ever have before, to build on the incredible work of this community and continue the discussion as we look ahead towards 2030. It is about so much more than trading your time for more edits on Wikipedia. It is truly about the impact that we can make to the world that we want to see. And so I thank all of you for everything that you have done to create this space from act from nothing 20 years ago. You have created a space and a place and a platform in which people truly have access to sharing what it is that they experience, their histories, their culture, their voices, and learning in deeper and more meaningful ways than was previously possible. So thank you very much. Microphone here. All right. No, I was. Yeah. No. Are there any questions? Any thoughts? Okay. Well. Oh, there is a question. In, yes, there are a few questions. Okay, great. Hi. Hey. Um. Thank you very much for the presentation. That was absolutely amazing. And some of the statistics really, should I stand up? Everyone's trying to look at me. Hi. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi, my name's Papa. Hi. <laughs> um, I, working with the um, Moskim Foundation, we're doing an educational format with Wikimedia in South Africa. Um, one of the stats that hit us was that there's more work about uh, the city of Paris than all of Africa online. And, that just blew my head. Yeah. Um, what kind of, what kind of uh, cultural context? What kind of data do you capture from people who are telling you about the work that you do, and how can more people share that with you when they get it? Like the the story from uh, the Palestinian territories or the um, Native American who was speaking. How do, how do we share that stuff with you? That's a great question. Um, we have a, a tool that allows students, educators, program leaders to capture the statistics. It's our dashboard. It's a tool that people can use just for the numbers around contributions. The stories tend to be um, a form of oral history in themselves. They're the stories that we hear when we attend conferences like these, when people share what it is that they've achieved. Having said that, we also have uh, a, a space through the education program on MetaWiki, which, right, is that? 
outreach, excuse me, sorry. There's so many places. There's an outreach wiki in which people can share information about the programs that they're doing. Um, so describe the nature of the program, who the partner is, when it started. And that's a really rich repository for learning through just, just sort of reading. I think in, in our experience, it is actually the exchange of information that happens at convenings like this, uh, conferences, convenings, capacity building trainings, workshops, that leads to that richer sort of ability to capture the human element of it when you're actually able to sit face to face with people. And that's why I referred to it as a form of sort of oral tradition of itself. Um, but I think those resources, the dashboard for, for numbers tend to be a really good way to track the sort of the quantitative impact of people's work. And then um, Outreach Wiki is, is a really great place to learn about what other people in the education space are doing. I, and if you have questions about, I yeah, yeah, I was gonna say if you have questions, uh, there's a team, do you all mind raising your hands so we can, yeah, Maria, Nicole, Silesh, uh, Melissa, sorry, Melissa's new, we only met twice, <laughs> uh, at the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, who can speak a little bit more to some of the opportunities. You can, you can ask us and uh, we can provide you more platforms. But I just also wanted to mention that the education team hosts twice monthly office hours. Please come and tell us what you're doing uh, and you know, give us those stories because we love to hear them uh, and you know, we, we talk about them and we amplify what you're doing in your local communities. It's so important. So we have twice monthly office hours. We have a monthly newsletter. Um, so there, there's a lot of opportunity to actually share with us and with the rest of the community. I thought I saw another hand in the back. Was there another question? <coughs> no? All right. Well, thank you very much for getting up uh, early to come. And I think it's going to be an amazing conference. So I look forward to learning and, and hearing the oral traditions of all of the work that you're doing and, and exchanging those stories. So when I go out and have the opportunity to speak to other audiences, I can continue to share your incredible work. Thank you.